Hello everyone, Lithium, which was once considered as the new oil of the world. The most efficient metal to make batteries which will run our future automobiles. And the metal which changed the very geopolitics of the world. The metal whose growth was once considered as indisputable is crashing from the last few months. And hear me out, it's not a cyclic crash of 10 to 20%. Just give a thought how much it might have crashed. I'll give a hint, it's more than 50%. Lithium price crashed by more than 80% from its all-time high in November 2022, almost losing all of its value. Check this lithium commodity graph. This is the year axis and this one is the price axis. Now lithium is traded in Chinese Yuan, so the values are in CNY per ton. From 2017 to November 2022, lithium price soared to its all-time high of about 6 lakh Chinese Yuan per ton. This is about 70 lakh 80,000 rupees per ton. But since the prime days of lithium, today the price has crashed by 84% to mere 1 lakh 8,500 Chinese yuan. This is around 12 lakh 80,000 rupees per ton. And so lithium prices have essentially collapsed, unraveling on oversupply fears. At the beginning of the year, spot prices topped $70,000 per ton, according to Benchmark. But today, they're trading under $16,000, a decline of nearly 80%. Price of lithium is down about 80% in yeah. just 12 months, just a little bit over 12 months. So it's a huge fall for the price of lithium. Well, lithium prices spiked back in 2021 before crashing back to earth at the end of last year. But it could just be the beginning of the fallout. So what happened last year? that extracted all the value of this precious metal and how Reliance is involved in this whole picture. So let me give you a structure or mind map we'll be following in today's episode. We will understand why lithium is crashing under two variables, the supply side and the demand side. We will evaluate the supply side by the production of the mining companies. Similarly, we'll evaluate the demand side by two factors, namely major EV markets and sodium ion batteries. Next, we'll see how Reliance is taking a strategic position in the battery sector. And lastly, we'll see whether lithium will regain its value or not. So let's begin. Now, since we know that the lithium price has crashed, as a basic economics, the supply side must be higher than the demand side, right? But how can lithium be so surplus that it crashed by 80%? Isn't lithium a scarce resource? Isn't everyone tussling to get lithium? Well, there is a story behind it. In the year 2022, the demand for electric cars were rising rapidly. Tesla was on their peak days and every major economy was promoting electric cars. As a result, the demand for battery-grade lithium spiked up. And during that time, all the major market analysts predicted that the demand for lithium will be higher than the supply till 2028. The same year, S&P Global predicted that the lithium demand will reach 9,89,000 metric tons in the year 2023 which will be more than the supply and it will double to over 2 million metric tons by 2028. This demand supply mismatch will only go by 2027. So the entire EV market was very optimistic towards the rise in the demand of lithium because the demand for electric cars were at its peak. Now to meet the rising demand and lured by the high prices of lithium in the year 2022, the mining companies across the globe pushed their production to the record heights. Look at this graph. From the year 2022 to 2023, the global lithium supply increased by 31.3%. Similarly, this year it increased by 25%. So in two years, the total supply of lithium increased by almost 50%. Pilbara Minerals is Australia's largest lithium miner. Uh, they've got a lot of lithium mines and some of the smaller producers have already announced they're going to stop mining lithium and just mine the stockpiles at their mines uh, at the moment. So there's a serious problem with the lithium market because there's been a massive oversupply of lithium. But even this production was considered low compared to the demand what analysts had predicted. So the mining companies thought they were at the least risk. The stage was set. The mining mafias were ready to roll up their sleeves and count some big cash. But the plot takes a very unexpected twist. The demand for electric cars did not perform as predicted. Now there are two major reasons for the poor demand. Firstly, low demand in the biggest EV markets. See, USA and China consume 70% of the global EV batteries because they are the biggest EV sellers. Now these two markets did not perform as expected. Let's look at China first. 
See, China had a policy where they gave subsidies to the consumers on the purchase of electric cars. Now, these subsidies were removed by the end of year 2022, increasing the price of electric cars in China. And there is a very interesting strategy on how China dominated the global EV sector and I'll make a detailed video about it. But for now, since the price of these cars increased after the subsidies were removed, the demand for EVs fell substantially. And something similar happened in US as well. Just look at this graph. This is the graph of US federal rate. And as you can see, the federal bank rate in USA is at a 15 year high right now. This is the rate at which banks take loan from the federal bank, similar to repo rate in our country. But how federal bank rate is affecting the EVs demand? Let's understand this through this animation. Sam is a US citizen who wants a loan for his property. He went to his bank named Citibank. And as we saw, the US federal rate is 5.5% right now. This is the rate at which Citibank took loan from the US Federal Bank. Since Citibank wants to make profit, they gave property loan to Sam at 7% interest rate, keeping a margin of 1.5%. Now Sam was expecting it to be somewhere around 4 to 5%. But since he must pay 2 to 3% extra interest, now he is left with lesser money to spend on other expenses like an electric car or a television or a vacation trip. Now the people like Sam and the companies of US were expecting that the US Federal Bank will lower the rates, making the property loan much cheaper. But it turned out that the Federal Bank is in a no hurry to lower the rates, ultimately deteriorating the demand for electric vehicles. The longer that interest rates uh, stay at an elevated rate, the cost of capital obviously is uh, is higher. Um, so until that uh, EV demand comes back, these companies are sort of in this bear market. The companies had planned massive investment on the premise of much faster adoption of EVs. This is not playing out. And, not, and now we're hearing from corporates that they're pulling back or canceling altogether these investments. Just last week, Ford basically said, they're not going to spend 12 billion out of the 50 billion they, they were going to spend in EVs. GM has pushed out a second EV factory by about a year. Now, since the demand for EVs fell in these two major EV markets, naturally, the demand for lithium batteries fell drastically. And as we saw, the supply of lithium is at its all time high. So friends, as smart as you are, if the supply is too high and the demand is too low, Inevitably, the price of lithium dropped by 80%. But apart from low demand in these two countries, there is one more major reason which is affecting the demand for lithium. The rising demand of sodium ion batteries. But how did sodium ion batteries become such a tough competition to the lithium ion batteries? Well, there is a very major geopolitical reason behind this. See, right now, around 87% of total lithium produced is used only in EV batteries. And guess what? No major economy wants this much dependency on lithium for producing batteries. Why? Simply because there is a huge geopolitical consequence to it. Right now, there are very few countries who produce lithium. And lithium dependency means dependent on that country as well. It will become similar to oil, where the whole world is dependent on the oil producing countries. In this case, the whole world will be dependent on the lithium producing countries. And after the Russia-Ukraine war, when the entire Europe was dependent on Russia for oil, but diplomatically fighting against them in the war, got stuck in a quandary situation. And no other country wants a similar situation in future with lithium. But what's the solution? How can we not be dependent on lithium? Well, the solution was to innovate non-lithium based batteries. Well, guess what? There is one innovation which proved very successful in this regard. Yes, sodium ion batteries. And the growing demand of sodium ion batteries is really affecting the demand of lithium ion batteries. Because sodium is salt and salt is abundant everywhere in the world. It doesn't require mining, so it's more environment friendly. It's 30% cheaper than lithium batteries. It has higher overall lifespan than lithium batteries and it's highly non-flammable compared to lithium batteries. So nobody will ask you to remove the power banks from your luggage in the airport. And most of all, no country will be dependent on each other for creating batteries. But there is one drawback to sodium ion batteries. We'll talk about it, but for now in summary, since the supply of lithium shot up because of too much optimistic estimation of EV markets, the demand fell in the major EV markets like USA and China, 
and at the same time an alternative to lithium ion batteries is also gearing up inevitably the price of lithium crashed but now you must be wondering why was i talking about reliance in the intro where does reliance comes into picture <laughs> well while everyone was only focused on the glamorous ambani wedding Reliance already took a very strategic decision for our Indian battery market. In the year 2022, Reliance acquired 100% shareholding in Faradian Limited for 125 million pounds. Faradian is a UK-based company that produces sodium ion batteries. Faradian was really developed in the UK. We're making the UK the the global center of excellence for sodium ion technology. But at the same time, we were acquired by Reliance Industries at the end of last year. And Reliance is planning to open giga factories to make sodium ion batteries using Faradian's technology. So now, not only we found lithium mines in Jammu and Kashmir. we also have a major company producing sodium ion batteries making india future ready but now the question that evolves here is since sodium ion batteries is better than lithium ion batteries in most of the aspects will it completely replace the lithium based batteries and will lithium ever regain its value well like i said there is one major drawback to sodium ion batteries sodium ion batteries are not as energy efficient as lithium ion batteries in simple words sodium ion batteries need to be 40% bigger than lithium ion batteries to produce the same amount of energy it's not space efficient it can only be used in a places where space is not a big issue like heavy vehicles charging stations data centers or renewable energy storage but ev cars require compact batteries which can fit without taking much space and there is no alternative to lithium ion batteries in that sense hence even though the price of lithium has crashed right now the demand for ev cars will rise again ultimately pushing the demand for lithium as well lithium will regain its value and only time will tell when so viewers and subscribers that's the end of today's video and as usual i'll link down all the resources i used to make this video and if you found anything valuable please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel bye bye Thank <laughs> you.